In 2009, UNODC's counter piracy program was founded to deliver criminal justice support to countries in the Western Indian Ocean region who received suspected Somali pirates apprehended by international navies off the coast of Somalia for prosecution. The programme had two related goals, ensuring that trials were fair and efficient and that imprisonment was secure and humane. This was in large part supported by the EU Maritime Security Programme. One of the key elements of the Global Maritime Crimes Programming has always been to ensure that trials related to those who commit uh, maritime crimes or piracy are afforded fair and efficient trials. That has meant that in a lot of places that we've worked we've uh, done significant upgrades to the justice sector. We're going to call out your cases. If you hear your name please stand up and respond. This court remains to be the piracy court so any time where there is a piracy case they will be held here. It's also being used uh, very importantly for any sorts of high-risk cases. Since it was built in about 2010 it has flourished and it's now serving a number of different areas Areas. So a lot of the terrorism cases that are occurring on the coast are happening here rather in central Mombasa because this is uh, seen as the secure court. When those aren't being heard, it's serving a number of the police stations in the region. So people are coming here for traffic offences, for sexual offences. We always want, if we're investing in fighting piracy or maritime crime, that we leave uh, a legacy and contribute to the justice system overall. And this is a great example of that happening. Um, so this is court yes, two? Yes, this is court two. Yeah. So the accused persons are called one by one, and then they enter. So this is court two in session. This is the complainant, and yeah. this is the accused person. Yeah. When the success of the Shanzu court started going, they actually realized that it would be great to have a second magistrate sitting here, even though they don't actually have the space. So they've actually used one of the prosecutor's rooms and they hold court. Speaking to the chief registrar and people in the Kenyan judiciary, they, they realize that this is a really booming courtroom. Both them and us are really trying hard to find a way that we can support uh, the Shanzu court to be able to expand a little with infrastructure to be able to keep up with their really high caseload. This is our criminal registry. We are struggling, but we're quite innovative. Yeah, no, yes. I know, I can you see can you guys see. are. Yeah. Given the high caseload of the courts, it's obviously getting to a point where uh, they need much more assistance. They're doing a really great job of organizing everything and keeping everything up to date, uh, but capacity is really, really the issue. How are things going here? Things are good. Yeah. This is one of the registry rooms at Mombasa Central Court where we've been able to implement the case management system. Previously, it used to be all paper-based, and we're now um, working digitally. So this is providing great uh, enhancements to customer service, speed of delivery, reducing any chances of misplaced files and reducing corruption risks. It's still under development, it's up and running now, and we're continuing to get feedback to continuously improve it. We've also provided computers and office equipment to help with the running of the courtroom. And this is all quite important because the better the court is running from the outside, the faster justice can be served to everybody who's waiting to be heard by the courts. The programme also supports repatriation and prisoner transfers um, where suspects are transferred to another jurisdiction to serve their sentence. All prisoner transfers have allowed for convicted Somalis to be closer to their families and culture, increasing their chances for successful rehabilitation back into society. As a response to maritime piracy off the coast of Somalia, UNODC, together with other international partners and the government of Seychelles, was able to develop Seychelles as a piracy prosecution center, which meant that pirates detained outside its territorial waters could be transferred to Seychelles and prosecuted in the Seychelles court so that there is a legal finish and a deterrent to piracy. So what you see in Seychelles is the entire piracy prosecution model. For the past few years, the judiciary of Seychelles has been actively engaged in terms of the hearing and disposal of cases of piracy, mostly pirates operating on the east coast 
of Africa from Somalia. And due to the fact that we are a very small jurisdiction, we had a huge amount of support from UNODC. They assisted us both in terms of providing uh, personnel to prosecute those cases. We also received huge funding in terms of uh, a courtroom which would accommodate um, the pirates. This building is uh, the Supreme Court Annex and it was given to us uh, by the UNODC. This courtroom was equipped with the best facilities and with the best technology. In the Seychelles, the Indian Ocean program has also been actively supporting the prisons that currently hold the pirates. Our interventions have included training the prison staff, providing uh, refurbishment to make sure the prison environment is as conducive as possible. 2010-2011 period, the Paris Code was at its peak and the UNODC became a very strategic and important partner. And at one point we had close to 120 pirates incarcerated in this prison. The, these are some of the pirates that we are holding. Some of them have been uh, exposed to computer classes and English classes. When the Somali people came to here, no English. Now, I've been here 20 people in Somalia, Somali prisoners. All of them, they talk English very well. They can answer every question that you can ask. When I came here, I was not speak English, but now I know English. I, I know only our, our language before. We are change our life well. When you, inshallah, when you go soon in Somalia, we can some, some some job. We now we also become now a chef cook. I work in kitchen to cook food well. I will cut fish so nicely. I can get easily job. But before I don't know nothing to work. Although piracy off the coast of Somalia has declined in recent years, the program still works to ensure that countries in the region are prepared in case the problem reemerges. What we've got here now is a lot of real evidence. What is important now is to ensure that the systems that we have built in seashells and that have worked very successfully remain viable into the future. And we're just going to talk and, and walk through slowly how we would do a scene search. And towards that end, UNODC, together with other international partners, especially the EU NAVFO, have started a process where we conduct what could be referred to as a systems check exercise. The idea behind this exercise is that the Seychelles have already done a lot of piracy prosecutions in the past. We are just refreshing the knowledge and making sure that everything is still uh, in place and everyone is, is still trained to get a successful prosecution if we have any piracy incidents in the future. Without UNODC, without the assistance of our foreign partners who uh, deployed massive assets in the, in, in, in the Indian Ocean, it would not have been possible for us to get rid of the scourge of piracy. But what is important, and I know, that UNODC is continuing with their work be it in Seychelles, going into other frontiers like drug trafficking in the Indian Ocean. It is a massive problem for our country now and UNODC still is there with us, accompanying us in making sure that we have a safe and sound society. The Indian Ocean programme continues the legacy work on the piracy prosecution model implemented in East Africa which resulted in the prosecution of over 300 suspected pirates detained by foreign navies in the three piracy prosecution states, namely Kenya, Seychelles and Mauritius. In order to sustainably secure the significant investment made to date, it is critical to continue to maintain these capabilities and also build resilience against all maritime crime this will be supported under the EU Maritime Security Programme as part of the exit strategy. The programme has since been adapted to address the changing threat picture to ensure capacity building efforts are specialist, sustainable and transferable to other forms of maritime crime. This includes regional training programmes for maritime law enforcement officers, improving case management systems, continued support to prisons and more.
For instance, in Kenya, the programme delivers sustainable training capability to the Kenyan Maritime Police Unit, providing immediate and long-term improvements in operational capacity to fight piracy, drug trafficking and other forms of maritime crime. This includes practical training on visit board search and seizure procedures. One of the key challenges in dealing with maritime crime in the Indian Ocean region is the transnational nature of the crimes which span across multiple jurisdictions and so require well-coordinated criminal justice responses amongst the countries in the region. In 2015, UNODC's Global Maritime Crime Programme launched the Indian Ocean Forum on Maritime Crime, which seeks to establish coordination between Indian Ocean states to deal with transnational organised crime committed at sea. A network for prosecutors is also established as part of this initiative. With the expansion to address many forms of maritime crime, the programme has also extended geographically to work across a much wider Indian Ocean space. In Maldives, for instance, we are delivering island security training and in Bangladesh, we are supporting the river police to enhance mobility and law enforcement capacity on their waterways. UNODC will continue to work with regional states and the international community to counter maritime crime and promote blue justice in the Indian Ocean region.